They say a picture is worth a thousand words, but what if I could draw a thousand pictures? And why the hell would I even want to do that? It all started roughly two years ago. I had this great stable job as a full stack engineer, yet I felt unsatisfied. All the programming I did felt repetitive and I really wasn't learning anything new. I knew something had to change. I had just started watching a lot of YouTube engineers like Mark Rover, Michael Reeves and Shane from Stuff Made Here and that really inspired me to want to build and control machines. So I started doing some projects in that direction. And I had some quite interesting results. Yeah. Eventually, I found my turning point when Mark Rover released his monthly engineering class. In that class, I would learn how to prototype with wood and other DIY materials, but most importantly, it paved the way for me to think like a maker. By the end of the class, I had my first prototype of the plotter. And even though it had a lot of issues, which I'll get into a bit later, it was a great start. Even Mark Rover himself was impressed. And I guess I could have left it there. I mean, I kind of got what I wanted. I know how to work with electronics and prototype some stuff. And I already got the recognition from NASA. Why bother? doing anything else. Well, I still had a sort of unfulfilling job and I couldn't quit just yet. Nobody was hiring me for my non-existent robotic skills. I realized I had to finish what I started. And man, was that a grind. First, I needed a proper design, which means I first had to learn how to do mechanical design in Fusion 360. Skipping to the final result, not too shabby, eh? Even though the change history looks kind of broken. Anyway, I want to walk you through my design decisions. There were three major things that had to change from the prototype. First, I needed a way to calibrate and reset the machine automatically. In the prototype, the coding parameters were taken from manual measurements. On top of that, I had to manually put the plotter in its starting position on every little attempt. Now, besides being a pain in the ass, this really lacked repeatability and precision. But now, I have limit switches on all of the extremities. I even designed these custom ones to attach to the table. This allows the plotter to move until it finds a button and therefore knows where to stop. It can also automatically walk from its starting position to the final one and count how many steps that took. I mean, that's proper automation. Real for real. The second big issue was the pen mechanism. It's kind of hard to see, but the pen was just sitting on a folded paper clip. I mean, yeah, talk about DIY prototyping. Besides there being way too much wiggle room, which already makes the drawing less precise, it was only being pushed down by gravity, which didn't let me control the pressure of the pen. Anyway, fast forward to today, I got this awesome linear actuator mechanism, which was totally inspired by this Lego build video. The video is really good. I put the link in the description. I bet you can take some inspiration from it as well. This along with some rubber bands allows me to precisely control the position of the pen and also somewhat control its pressure. Now, before I jump onto the third issue, let's quickly quickly understand how the plotter knows where it is. Its position is something I can calculate using polar coordinates. In short, this is just a different way of representing points in space. Instead of using x and y on a Cartesian plane, the same point can be expressed by the distance from its center and the angle that it's at, where I can move the carriage along the rails to change its position from the center, and also I can move the wheel at the end to change the angle. And by always keeping track of its steps, it should know where it is in space. Now for the third and biggest issue. The plotter would totally lose track of where it was after running for a while. And this wasn't the software issue either. On one hand, the table I was working on was pretty crooked and I believe the end wheel would slip from time to time and this would make the plotter incrementally more incorrect the longer it was running. This results in new shapes being drawn over previously drawn lines and most shapes wouldn't really close up properly. I mean, I can live with a few bugs, but this is totally unacceptable. So starting off with the crooked table, I needed a flat one. What did I do? I went overkill and built one from scratch. I know, I know, totally unnecessary, but it was a nice experience nevertheless. In the end though, I had to leave the table in Portugal, so yeah, sorry, I just really wanted to use that footage. Also, I, I bought a flat table here. Anyway, the real solution was to have an encoder at the center of rotation of the plotter. The encoder cannot slip and therefore cannot lose precision over time, and therefore it allows me to know the real position of the plotter. With this information, I can correct the position of the plotter every time the wheel slips a bit. And voila, the issue is fully fixed, shapes close up properly now, which means it's ready to make some proper Drawings. Look at this dude. Now there's still plenty of cool things to show. I hope that got you excited enough to subscribe and wait for the next video. Also, I don't want to beg, but if you leave a comment and leave a like, that really helps out with all this algorithm shit. So just do it now. Seriously though, I really would like more people to see this. If you're still unsure about me, you can watch this video right here. I think this is a good moment to finish the video on. Yeah, no, there's still some cool things to show about the electronics and the software side of things. Some of it is still in development and I'll keep it for the next video. And besides the technical shit there are a lot of cool features that are already built into it and that's all folks i really appreciate that you made it this far in the video and i hope to see you in the next one peace out